Joe here. I'm doing this video to show you some of my gear. For the last two years, I've been living on a motorcycle full time. I camp for probably at least 300 days a year. Uh, so I've had practice and time to kind of like get all my gear situated. So, uh, so I'm gonna go through some of my gear and show you that and hopefully you get something out of it. This is my tent and uh, notice the color and notice how it blends in with the surroundings. With a lot of the type of camping I do, which is uh, outlaw stealth camping, moto camping, whatever you want to call it, where basically I'm camping not in an established campground, and we'll leave it at that. Um, you can use your imagination as to why the green would be good uh, in this sort of a setting, which is not an established campground. So this is a three-person tent. Um, I had a two-person before this. It just wasn't damn big enough. If your tent's going to be your house, you got to have enough room to kind of move around. I do meditation every day, so uh, so this gives me enough room. I got enough headspace. But I found the uh, the three-person tent to be just about right. The main things uh, of importance with uh, with the tent that you're going to be sleeping in frequently: these right here. These are metal aluminum poles. Anything else other than aluminum is going to break, uh, and it's going to break easily. So, uh, so I found these absolutely when looking for a tent, aluminum poles, absolutely essential. I got a tarp about the size of the tent uh, that I place underneath the tent. Uh, it's kind of a footprint. I'll keep an eye on the weather forecast. If they're ever calling for rain, what I'll do is actually fold this up. I actually kind of fold it like that just so that no water can get in between the tarp and my tent. So I'll kind of fold it up underneath the uh, the tent like that. Sleeping pad, which is all of a half an inch thick right now because it's really worn out. And uh, so I've got, I'm looking into some other options as far as that goes. Okay, I've got, this is my cold weather guy right here. This is a uh, 30 degree uh, tent uh, sleeping bag that I got from Walmart. This is for cold weather. Actually, I broke this out last night. It's rated at uh, 30 degrees, but really it's more like a 40 degree. This is a 50 degree that uh, somebody gave me a couple years ago. And uh, this is good for like warmer climates and stuff like that. But again, it's kind of like more of, uh, even though it's rated at 50 degrees, it's really more of a 60 degree tent. So actually, if it gets really cold, what I'll do is crawl into this one first and then crawl into that one. This is kind of a, a pouch that you crawl into, but it's a sheet. And basically it keeps the inside of your sleeping bag clean. And uh, this one's pretty beat up actually. So that's it. I don't carry a pillow. I usually just use my riding jacket and uh, I'm pretty comfortable with that. I've gotten pretty used to just uh, using the riding jacket as a pillow. So this is my tank bag. Inside this, I've got my uh, uh, toothbrush bag, a couple of toothbrushes, toothpaste, deodorant, fingernail clippers, stuff like that. But actually the place I found to get these pouches is uh, the Dollar Tree. Um, yeah, if you can find a dollar store, uh, these pouches are the greatest thing in the world. I keep my uh, vitamins and stuff in there. Um, my uh, toothbrush and stuff in that one. My head trimmer, head and face trimmer. Anytime I want to test my charging system, all I do is plug this guy into the uh, battery tender lead coming off the battery. I don't have to disconnect any terminals or anything like that. And then it'll give me a readout right here. And uh, really convenient to use. I keep a, uh, like a camping fork. Um, there's a lot of instances in which I need a fork. And uh, this is pretty much all I need right here. I can pretty much anything you can eat, you can use a fork and kind of make it work. So um, batteries and stuff like that random odds and ends pins stuff like that bandanas this is uh all of my coffee right here as you can see typically when i make coffee in the morning i'll uh dump one of these into a bottle kind of like that and then add water shake it up and uh and that's how i drink my coffee but uh some people have criticized me about that <clears throat> and say i don't know anything about coffee but uh that's okay uh bluetooth headset 
and I use this just if I'm out setting up my camp or whatever and I get a phone call um, I can answer it and then uh, listen to the ear things and then uh, it's got a microphone as well I can just talk and do whatever I'm doing of course I got to have my Spanish book just to stay on top of it and stay fresh um, okay what else now oh, we got the motorcycle here's the GV box I just put on uh, which is awesome it's, uh, opened up a shitload of storage space but uh, <clears throat> So yeah, that's about it for now. I just got my GV box. And mounting plates. Getting ready to put those on. Up here, it looks like these have to come out. Then we replace them with some of the GV hardware. So just working on that outside of the uh, hardware store, uh, just in case. I lose any washers or uh, nuts and bolts or anything like that. Uh, just got the GV box mounted up. Got the rack mounted. Passenger backrest. Nice and comfortable. And uh, that, she's good to go. Well, it's uh, maintenance day. I've been putting this off for uh, a good week and a half. And actually, I'm really excited to be actually doing this right now. Uh, so there's a few procedures I'm gonna be doing today. I'm putting in the fuel pump from the tank that the guy at B&B Fasteners gave me I'm right outside the uh, O'Reilly's parking lot. Um, I'm told that if you leave a deposit, they will uh, let you borrow a torque wrench. My hydraulic clutch fluid, kind of a murky color. It's not really shifting gears as smooth as it probably should. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and flush that. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change the oil and the filter. The first thing I like to do before attempting any kind of a new procedure on a bike that I'm unfamiliar with is I will read as much as I possibly can. I will go over step by step from the service manual, all the procedures until I have it memorized in my head. And then I will watch YouTube videos on the forums, people that have done it and posted pictures. I'll look for every step of the process so I have it down by heart. And this is just the way I like to work. Secondly, I like to get all of my tools in a row. So as you can see, I've got basically everything I need right here. Um, I'm not too worried. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, jump into this procedure. First, I'm gonna work on taking uh, the, uh, the fuel pump out of that and uh, see how that goes. So I just removed all these nuts from around the side here. Notice I'm keeping everything organized in a star pattern the way that it came out so I don't get anything mixed up. Now what I'm gonna do is remove this uh, uh, seat height adjuster and then that'll give me access to the fuel pump. Okay, so I just pulled my fuel pump out of the bike, the one that was in there, and this is what I found. This should not be corroded anything like this. <laughs> this fuel pump is fucked, man. So I'm hoping that this uh, takes care of the symptoms I was having. I think obviously if this wasn't the culprit, um, it probably would have been a factor uh, at some point before too long. I mean, good lord. Now for the moment of truth. That's good, I heard the fuel pump. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah. My uh, fuel pump that I just replaced seems to be doing okay. So now I'm gonna work on uh, the oil change and the uh, hydraulic clutch flush.
this right here is the color that this is supposed to be. So I've noticed that it's been kind of hard to uh, hard to shift gears. And uh, so that leads me to believe the clutch isn't engaging all the way. And uh, there's probably air. So I'm just going to go ahead and flush this nasty fluid and uh, get it looking right. Okay, so I'll take you on a quick little tour of my bike. This is my new uh, sleep and roll that I found on Amazon for 30 bucks. This is like sort of a memory foam type of thing that I just uh, used to replace my other worn out uh, sleeping pad. These I've used ever since pretty much I hit the road. This is a, uh, I think Oxford makes it. It's a uh, 70 liter uh, dry bag. And uh, right now I've got both of my sleeping bags, all of my clothes and a couple other little odds and ends uh in there ultimately i'm trying to get rid of this and get everything situated into the gv box um just to kind of free up space for passengers and uh so my tent my two tarps um gv box i just put on okay bug spray I like to keep a big empty compartment like this if i can and this is all of my electronics laptop um any cords stuff like that that I need are in there. Peanuts for a snack. This is the GV box. I don't even know what I've got in here. Uh, not much. A jacket, a couple other odds and ends in there. In here, i got a motorcycle cover, um, which I really don't use at all, um, except when I'm in Mexico. i got some Spanish books, stuff like that down there. Uh, these are all my bungee cords in this bag. Quite a few bungee cords. Um, little air compressor pump. Really, I got this for uh, the KLR. Um, being a spoke wheel bike for uh, repairs and stuff, I could pump it up. But uh, I think I'll probably keep it um, just in case I need some air or whatever uh, on the go. Or if I do get a nail or whatever, um, I could plug it and uh, top off with air. Um, tools and stuff like that I usually keep right here I'm kind of getting everything organized on this bike all of my sockets and stuff like that usually I got wrenches I think they're yeah there's a couple of things in there marker scissors uh, cable repair kit um, the glove box contains actual gloves imagine that Anyway, that's my bike. That's my setup. I uh, hope you guys got something out of it, and thanks for watching.